Hi everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Alexandre Lebrun. I, uh, I failed many times in AI projects, so I'd like to share these failures uh, with you today. Uh, so I failed in actually uh, lots of different uh, environments with AI. Um, at Virtuos, I had a chatbot company back in 2002. Um, we released our first bot for SNCF in 2005, and one of the first conversations uh, was somebody who said, uh, my name is wrong on the, on the reservation. And the bot says, hi, wrong on the reservation. And then we started to realize, wow, it is going to be harder than we, than we thought. Um, then I saw failures at uh, Nuance, a large, you know, large corporate, US corporate company. Uh, and then at wit.ai, a startup I, I, I created in the Valley. And by the way, uh, Luc Julia when, was one of the first users of our platform. He used it for home automation for his home. And when our servers were down, he couldn't uh, enter his home. He said, please open the door, please open the door. And it didn't work because we were down. So thanks again, uh, Luke, for your uh, trust. We are still friends. Um, and then we joined, uh, we were acquired by Facebook. And even at Facebook, you know, the maker of uh, AI, I saw some, so some failures, and I was respons responsible for some of them. Um, I have so many inside stories about Facebook, but I won't say anything because uh, Jérôme Pesanti, my ex-boss, will be on stage right after me, so another time. And very recently, I started a new company called uh, Nabla. So how to fail um, with AI? For, I am an expert, almost, uh, by, by Niels Bohr definition, even if the field is not narrow. But I'm, I'm on my way to become uh, the, an expert. So first, uh, f first, first way to fail is what I call death by innovation committee. You, you must avoid three things. I've seen three mistakes. First is try to get uh, everybody agree uh, on, the, on the target, on the scope for AI project. It's, it's impossible. Um, you need a very opinionated person who really wants to do something very specific, very clear target, and, and put all in on this target. Otherwise, uh, it will be very difficult. The second mistake is to try to do that in an innovation group where um, you, you don't have uh, technical resources. Uh, typically, AI looks very uh, beautiful on the paper, but you, you have like 20% will be to play with PyTorch models, but then 80% will be plumbing to integrate with other systems, get data, and so on. And if you don't have technical resources in the innovation uh, group, um, it will be very difficult to beg for other people, you know, other departments to give you resources. The third um, uh, typical uh, mistake, to try to do everything in a closed lab, I think it's very hard to do innovation and disruption in a closed environment, but it's still harder with machine learning because if without actual real-world data and real-world um, evaluation of the result, you, you cannot do anything. So it's, you have to work with other uh, business units and it may be very difficult to, to convince them to spend uh, time with you. So typically, if you miss one of these, uh, if you make one of these three, when we made one of these three mistakes, um, then you build a bot. This is like the default AI project uh, when you have a huge pressure from the uh, CEO of board of directors to do something, you will do a bot just to show. And then you're, you, you're happy you've done AI. And I have nothing against bots, by the way. Uh, I think bots are very important. Uh, why? Because messaging is becoming the, the normal way to interact on a, on, a, on a mobile phone. In just about six years, um, messaging, uh, like 95% of users of internet uh, use messaging every day now. And so, how do I call an app for messaging? It's, it's a bot. I think this is the best definition for, for a bot. It's an app in a messaging, uh, in a conversational UI paradigm. So bots, some bots are good, uh, some are useful, but often they have nothing to see with AI. It's not relevant to AI. You know, a good bot can be pure uh, decision tree and a good UX, uh, it's not AI. So there is almost a cost of opportunity to do uh, bots because you, you, you may be happy with doing bots and then you think you do AI and you don't do anything else and one day it will be uh, too late. So I think bots are, in this regard, uh, a, little bit, um, a little bit dangerous. Um, so if you don't want to do a bot, something else, um, we made this mistake to, to, do too increment, to be too incremental in our uh, thinking. And the, 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 I think the question, what can I do with, with my data, uh, is wrong. And sometimes it's better to, to ask uh, yourself, uh, what do I really want to do with AI? Uh, what goal can we set for uh, ambitious goal? And then we'll find ways to find the data. We'll, we'll, we'll set up supply chain for data. We may find uh, you know, tricks to get data. We may uh, use transfer learning to use uh, data sets from other domains. And so 
if you start from data, you won't have a very ambitious uh, project. You will just like optimize existing processes as opposed to don't doing something really disrupting. Another good question is what is possible now that was not possible uh, two years or one year ago. Um, and a good example for that is um, generative adversarial networks. You know, GAN, you may have heard of this. Uh, it's a new way to generate uh, things. Here we generate these videos are uh, generated. Uh, so th these two people don't, don't know how to dance at all, but it's uh, just generated uh, f f from a GAN. Uh, we can generate 3D PCs, uh, pictures, sound, audio, uh, with this kind of technology. So uh, it's good for, for you know, people in your business uh, units to look at that and, and think by themselves, okay, could we use this for, for our own problems? You, you have to do that. Ideally, uh, it's, very it's very bad actually to work in a closed circle. Uh, you need fresh people coming from the outside. Um, and it's difficult because um, you cannot hire a new uh, scientist every uh, every month or every three months to stay uh, to stay uh, up to date with that. Well, so the good news is all AI research is public. Almost all AI research is published on archive. Uh, the bad news is very often you know 200 paper uh, people in the world understand the paper, uh, and 90% of them work for uh, Google or or Facebook or a few companies. So it's, this is difficult, but you need to to refresh your uh, your um, perception of what's possible. So the two impo important words here are uh, possible and now. And so which leads me to the uh, fourth uh, typical failure, which is um, having crazy expectations and having a, an AI goal that depends on strong AI, that, that won't be successful until strong AI or gen a, a artificial general intelligence is, is solved. And it actually, you are re reasonable people in this room. You know about AI machine learning, so, but some people don't. And you, you may have board members you know, typical story is they went to uh, a movie during the weekend. They see a super smart AI in the in a movie, and it started in the 60s with with uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey and movies like that. And then they look online, and you have lots of articles, lots of press about crazy things like like um, this this uh, humanoid robot uh, Sophia, who, who became a citizen of Saudi Arabia uh, last year. And it's, it's really a scam, you know, you see videos and I, I think Luke uh, just uh, insisted a lot on that already, I totally agree with him. Uh, when they present this uh, thing and saying it's asking questions, do you want to become a citizen of this country? What do you think about this and that? It's, it's a pure scam, it's a completely remotely controlled uh, robot and everything it says is scripted by humans. But some people don't know that, and if you write an article about uh, uh, robots that are going to kill humans, you will have more clicks than if you write an article about, oh, I improved uh, uh, this model by 2%. Uh, nobody will click on your, on your link, so that, that's a problem. And then the third uh, factor is uh, what I call the clever hands effect. I don't know how many of you are, are familiar with clever hands already. <laughs> so yeah, do you want to hear a story? Okay, I have two minutes. Um, Clever Hans was a horse in Germany a uh, hundred years ago, and he, he, could do, he was a genius in mathematics. So you can ask any question, the horse would answer. So if you say two plus three, of course the, the horse couldn't speak, but it would tap five times like that with its hoof on the, on the ground, and it worked. For 10 years, the, the owner became very rich, and after 10 years, somebody understood um, that the, the horse was just looking at the faces of people around, around him. And you can ask any question, it, it would just start to tap. And when you see excitement in the, on the face of people, it would stop. And because people know the answer, is they know it's five, wh when the, the, the horse has, has done five times, they become very excited to know if he will stop or not. And so it's the right time to stop. So very simple algorithm, very powerful pattern recognition. You still have to recognize emotion on faces. But it's not, we, we people, uh, over-interpreted what, what the horse was doing. The, the horse was not doing mathematics. And I tell this story because it's what we see every day today with, with some AI demos where, um, yes, there is a powerful model the, doing pattern recognition, supervised learning, but we tend to over-interpret uh, the, these results and to say, okay, there we have strong AI, we have conscience, we have emotions. It's, it's, this is completely bullshit. I agree with Luke on that. But when your board has these three factors, 
they may come to, to you and say, okay, let's do this with AI. Let's, uh, let's automate all our, this department or do this crazy project. And, and you, you can get stuck in, in, uh, in things like that. I've seen companies uh, in this situation. So this is dangerous uh, as well. The, the right way to, to look at the map, so I think this is a, a one map of what's possible today in green. You know, in green, actually, it's not more than possible. It's where uh, machine learning is stronger than humans, like playing chess, playing Go. Uh, describing pictures for visually impaired people, and so on. Speech recognition, you know, speech recognition, now uh, models are better than, than humans. Uh, there are things in orange where give us a few months, a few years, and we'll be stronger than, than humans. Um, autonomous driving is, is almost there, you know, it works in Palo Alto, but it doesn't work in uh, Place de l'Etoile in Paris, uh, and I think it will take time to, 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 to go there. Um, and then you have things in red, like long-term planning, um, efficient learning, what Luke mentioned, you know, learn with, from just a few examples. A baby sees a cat three times, he knows it's a cat, but we need to see it 10,000 times. Um, explain our decisions, common sense, and so on. And the mistake we see uh, again and again is that people think, okay, it will, it's a linear progress, and because we know how to do these things, we progress, we will do the red ones uh, in a few years. And it's, it's not true. Uh, because there is a glass ceiling between these things. And below the ceiling, it, 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 can, it can be achieved with supervised learning, with uh, examples and feedback. But above the ceiling, it depends on something else, you know, unsupervised learning. And we have no clue um, how, how, how to do that. We don't know how children learn. And when I say we, we don't know, we have no clue at all. And um, so maybe it will come in five years or 10 or 20, but it's impossible to predict because it's not, uh, there, are, there are no milestones to, to, this, to this point. It's completely unknown territory. And so if, so for instance, uh, the example I, I, I chose, uh, the, it's an AI that describes the pictures for uh, visual impaired people and the output, which has very, very good results. It's actually used by Facebook in production uh, for blind people. And, but for this example, it says an airplane is parked on the tarmac uh, at the airport because in all the data sets, every time there is a plane and, and uh, something like a road, it's a plane on a tarmac. And it's our common sense tells us there is something wrong about this picture, but th there is no way for us to tell the AI, the model, that something is, is weird and, and wrong with, with this analysis. And it looks like a, a small problem, but it's actually very, very hard to solve. And the worst thing is uh, the model is very, very confident about his, this analysis. Uh, so we have no way to tell the model to be more, uh, to be, to be more cautious. So judging at AI projects, we have to make sure that on this map, we don't depend on things on the top. Um, ideally, we would be uh, close to the ceiling, but just below. Uh, generative adversarial networks are, is a good example of something that's really possible today and not, not uh, really applied yet, and, uh, but we have to be very cautious before we start a project to know where we are and on what um, we depend. So um, thank you very much. Uh, oh yeah, I had an advertisement uh, spot for my new company uh, before uh, Jerome takes over. Thank you very much.